Last time, I looked at the various trigger points that you can use in oscillators to provide a probability-based prediction of what will happen in the market next. And this time, we're going to look specifically at which of those trigger points are best suited to different types of trading system. So for example, which trigger points work best in a trending system or a mean reversion system? Which ones work best in a breakout system? And we'll do this by looking at live charts and of course focusing our attention on how to put them to best use when you build your trading systems. Now, oscillators need to be used in different ways depending on the type of system you're trying to use and the type of edge that you're trying to extract from the market. And last time, we considered five different trigger points of oscillators. The first of those is when the oscillator enters either the overbought region or the oversold region. And then we looked at the opposite of this, so when they exit those regions. And both of these provide point-in-time triggers that can be used in order to execute, for example, a trade open or a trade close. We then went on to look at turning points and how they can be used as an indication of what's going to happen in the market next. But I did make it clear that these are higher risk entry points. Just because the oscillator has turned does not mean that it will now enter back into neutral territory. Often, oscillators of this type stay in the overbought or oversold region for long periods of time. So use this with caution and only when in conjunction with another indicator to give you that intelligence to let you know that it is more likely to go back into neutral territory than to stay in the oversold or overbought region. The next were inflection points, and this is where the gradient changes. And so this again gives us more information about what's happening in the underlying price action. And then finally, we looked at using a signal line in conjunction with the main line and how we can use crossover points in order to give us that intelligence that we need. And this is often a good balance of reducing the risk slightly compared to the turning point option, but also getting us into the market earlier than using the exiting the overbought or exiting the oversold regions can give us. But again, it's something that has to be backtested properly to know whether this is suited to your system or not. Now, as we've said before, the whole purpose of using triggers in this way is to enable us to have a probability-based prediction about what's going to happen in the market next. And usually, this is something to do with a turning point, for example, in the price action. And based on that intelligence that we get, we can then make decisions such as opening trades or closing trades all based around the timing of those triggers that we get. Now, these next points are probably the most important. When starting out on the journey of looking at how an indicator can help you achieve what you need, you have to have your system's premise at the forefront of your mind. And in conjunction with that, you need to have a really good understanding of your indicator's behavior and the type of information it gives out. And by combining those two pieces of information, that will give you the most likely type of trigger that will work for your system. And this is so important because not all trigger types will be suitable to different trading strategies. So one that works well in a trending market might not work well in a mean reverting market and vice versa. Now, by using the right development approach, you can prove which one works correctly, but it always helps if you have a good starting point and you know where to focus your efforts. So let's now get into the detail by looking at some charts and some indicators to see how this might be done. 
So the first trigger point that we'll look at is one where the indicator enters the overbought or oversold regions. And just to illustrate the point, this is never a trigger point that you'd want to use if you were developing an open signal for a mean reverting strategy, for example. And that's because when the indicator does enter this oversold region, as you can see here, very often it will stay in this region for an extended period of time. So we can see that here. We can also see that here. And what happens during that time it's in that region is that we tend to see trending activity. And in periods of time where the indicator doesn't reach the overbought region, it just touches it here. But other than that, it's not entering that region at all. It means that we're going to stay in that trending condition. But what this does mean, of course, is that this particular open is often used in conjunction with trending systems. And it can provide you with a good entry point in order to get onto that trend. And the same type of trigger, but in the opposite direction, can be used to exit that trade, because that might mean that the trend is now over. So for example, where it briefly crosses the overbought region here, and here, and here, might all be good indications of that. But you'd obviously have to backtest different levels in order to make sure that you weren't leaving the trend too early. Now, conversely, if we now move on to the second type of trigger point, which is moving back into neutral territory from an overbought or an oversold region, this tends to be a much better entry point for mean reverting systems because the change in momentum has already started. However, as I've said in previous episodes, this must be done in conjunction with another indicator operating in a longer time frame to let you know what the underlying trend or trading range behavior is in the markets. So for example, if there was a longer term downtrend, then you wouldn't want to be buying at this point here. So for example, while we're in this downtrend here, this would clearly be a bad place to open up a long trade as part of that mean reversion strategy. But let's now look when the market is in a trading range. So this is a good example here where there's a lot of market movement, but there isn't any underlying trend in either direction. And so if your long term indicator is telling you that that's what the market's doing, then your mean reversion system becomes viable. And at this point, we can start to look at that exiting of the indicator from the overbought region into neutral or oversold into neutral as a good candidate for a trade entry. So here, for example, when the momentum changes, we see this underlying reduction in the price. Likewise, when the indicator goes from oversold into the neutral territory here, we see an underlying rise in the market. So hopefully you can see here how you can't just use a single indicator on its own. You'll really struggle to get a profitable system doing that. Usually you need one indicator to tell you the type of market and then your other indicator to give you the trigger point of when you should be entering into that market. So up until this point in the series on indicators, we've only considered really the trigger points. So that's what we're focusing on today. But you will be interested in the next episode where I'm going to start to look at using indicators as filters to tell us what the market is doing. So far, we've looked at two of our trigger points, and one of these is more suitable to providing the trade open signals in a trending market, and one is more suitable in a trading range market. The third type of trigger that we talked about was a turning point in the indicator. And as I've already suggested, there's a higher level of risk here. But when it works, it will get you into the market earlier. So let's look at a few examples of this. So there's a turning point here, which is very close to the top of this price. There's a turning point here, equally very close to the top point in the, in the price action here. And here, and here. However, the problem with this is when you have a false top, and this is a good example of that right here. 
where the indicator turns down, but then proceeds to a higher level. And that's where the risk is associated to this type of entry. Because here, you'd be getting into the market somewhere here, and you'd be going underwater significantly before that trade then went into profit. And by that time, your stop loss may have been hit, and you've got a losing trade on your hands. So how do you know whether the turning point or the crossover from overbought to neutral is going to work best? Well, that's where good quality backtesting comes in. And only by performing that backtesting will you know which of those works best in the long run over tens of thousands of trades. And with those sorts of numbers of trades, you can have assurance that you've got statistical significance in your results and therefore are able to trust the outcomes of those backtests. Now, another trigger point we looked at was the signal line crossover. And often this provides us with a better balance of risk versus getting into the trade at the optimal point. So let's look at a few examples. Now, if we were waiting for the bar to close to lock in the indicator value, as I spoke about last time, if we were looking at the turning point, we wouldn't, of course, be entering at the turning point. We'd be entering a bar later. And so in this particular case, it would get us into the trade somewhere around here. Whereas if we were using the crossover, one bar after that crossover takes place occurs here. And so we'd be opening at the bottom of this bar. And so as we said, we're getting in at a less preferential level. However, you're getting in with lower risk that this is a false top. If we take a look at this one now, as we said, if we got in previously at this lower change of direction, that would have got us in somewhere around here. And our trade would have gone significantly underwater. Now, there's actually two crossovers here. There's one that occurs here momentarily and another that occurs here. But obviously, we'd be getting in at this first one because we wouldn't know what was going to happen in the future. So if we waited for the crossover, we'd get in at the following bar, which would be here, which would be the start of this bar. So as you can see, this gets us in at a more preferential level here without the risk that we had on the previous method. But again, what you have to remember is that we're just looking at a very small number of opportunities here. The only way of knowing which method actually works the best is by undertaking that thorough backtesting. OK, so I hope you found that useful and I hope that started to explain how we can use indicators and different triggers from those indicators for different types of system. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to start to look at how we'll use indicators and oscillators as filters. So to tell us information about what the market's doing, what the bigger picture is. Is the market in a trend? Is it in a trading range? And it's by combining that with the triggers that we've seen today that you can start to develop robust and reliable trading systems. Now, if you've not come across DarwinX before and you don't know what we do, then you can click on this link right here and it will take you to a page that will tell you about the benefits that we can offer to traders just like you. OK, so be sure to subscribe to make sure that you get notified when that next episode is released. And until next time, trade safe.